Welcome to Empowered Freedom. For more information and to connect with us via social media, visit paulctierina.com. Hey T, I was wondering if we're allowed to have sausages that have dextrose on them. All right, thank you for that question from the beautiful Manuela. Manuela, you're looking so healthy and vibrant. Your movements are looking so great in the morning. So awesome to see that. All right, so let's talk about dextrose real quick because I don't think it's brought up anywhere else um, in any of our discussions, maybe around stevia, and we'll talk about that for a second today. So dextrose is uh, it's like a natural sugar. It's found in, in nature and in real foods and some food products. Um, it's also known as D-glucose, which is where they got the form, the name dextrose is a little bit easier to call it dextrose versus D-glucose. So it's a version of glucose, which means that the body can use it for energy. Um, you know, it's something that occurs in nature, but then also we can extract it from food. So a lot of times they'll extract it from starchy foods, sometimes corn, but sometimes other starchy things. They'll, they'll get that down to monosaccharides and then extract dextrose from that. So um, dextract can be, or dextrose can be used for a lot of different reasons inside foods and food products. So it can be obviously used as a sweetener, um, but then also it can be used as a thickener and then, um, what else do I have? Oh, a texturizing agent. So, so I don't think that dextrose in and of itself is a problem. Maybe in high amounts it can be problematic. So what we really want to look for when we're looking at labels and things is um, the amount of sugar, total sugar in a serving or something. So, and, and the way that I'd look at sugars in general is we have optimal, you know, kind of medium gray area stuff and then things you completely want to avoid. So when it comes to sugars, the optimal is going to be real food sources of sugar. So honey, fruit, fruit uh, juices, uh, dates, figs, and things like that, right? In the uh, kind of gray area-ish, acceptable but not optimal realm, which is where dextrose is going to fall in, we have some things like agave, agave nectar, brown sugar, some of the rice syrups, um, uh, sucrose, um, what else, xylitol, some of the alcohol sugars. Um, i got a little list here of some other things. So corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, even though, oh my God, high fructose corn syrup, I have to avoid that at all costs. High fructose corn syrup, the reason it's called high fructose is it's like 60% maybe a little bit more fructose versus glucose, whereas regular sugar is 50-50. So it's like not a whole lot pro more problematic as far as the fructose component goes. Sometimes, or most of the time, it's derived from suboptimal sources, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, sugar is sugar for the most part. So, And most of the foods that we eat are gonna be avoiding that anyway, but the point is, it's, a, it's one of the gray areas things. Um, and then also lactose, uh, maltodextrin, you'll see in some things. So these things are not extremely problematic, maybe not optimal. You know, if you're looking at a food product, you know, you have two choices between one that has it and one that doesn't. Obviously, the one that doesn't would be ben more beneficial. Um, but in the grand scheme of making this work in a modern lifestyle, like, it's just not going to be problematic. Now, the things we absolutely want to avoid as ingredients are going to be the toxic oils, especially hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated oils, soybean oil, um, and then also the artificial sweeteners, you know, like aspartame and, and stuff like that. So um, now uh, to come back to bring it back to things like stevia and sausage and bacon and stuff. The reason we want to avoid it in stevia is because with stevia, we're trying to get a no calorie effect or a no calorie sweetener and having a little bit of dextrose in stevia is kind of counter no calorie, you know, counterproductive. All right. So um, and then when it comes to sausages and bacons and things, you're going to find dextrose in a lot of those as a curing agent, sometimes as one of the ingredients. And, um, and again, I just don't see that as being problematic. I'm trying to make this work. If I'm at Whole Foods, most of the sausages there may contain it. I always get the sausages in the counter. And if it has a little bit of dextrose, like that's just not a big deal. Now, if it's a really sweet sausage, I'm not going to be eating it first thing in the morning. Um, but I think you get the idea behind that, okay? So great question. Thank you, uh, Manuela, because your question just clarified a question for a lot of other people. All right, thank you. Thank you for spending time with us today. For more information, visit our main website at paulctarena.com where you can shoot us a message and also connect with us via social media. Thank you so much.